Hi, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to Mission 21 of this KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, I was bemoaning my lack of both science points and funds. This mission is going to deal with a bit of both. We are, for the first time in this series, on our way to Minmus. As you can see, Separatrons are being used to push away the boosters. There's a single Separatron on each booster, which I have recessed into the nose cone using the translation and rotation tools in the VAB, as well as turning down the thrust and removing most of the fuel. The rest of the lifter is nice and simple, using the familiar Reliant as a main engine and the much nicer looking FLT-800 fuel tanks. Once I unlock the 1.25 meter reaction wheels, I'll lose these big tail fins, but otherwise this is coming close to what I want for my small standard lifter. The only new part on the booster can't even be seen right now, the 0.625 meter TR2V stack decoupler, which is securing our payload under the fairing. As I'm going to Minmus, I launched at one of the nodes, the ascending one in this case and have adjusted my heading to 7 or 8 degrees north of the east. I'm aiming for a final inclination of 6 degrees, matching Minmus's inclination. There will be two more uncrewed missions following this one a little later in the episode. Each of those will be bringing up further satellites. The eventual purpose of those is to complete my communication network around the moon. But that's for later. As mentioned, this one is on its way to Minmus. Let's take a look at the contract. As you can see, we are to insert this satellite into a specific orbit about Minmus, but I want this to continue its life as a communication relay. So once the contract is complete, I will be putting this into an orbit more appropriate as a communication satellite. You can also see that I am required to put aboard a materials bay and a mystery goo, which is absolutely fine as I want to be collecting science anyway. So I also have along a barometer and a thermometer. Okay, there goes the booster, which I will recover later. Now it's up to the little probe. Why don't we take a closer look at it while it's completing its LKO insertion? As simple as this probe is, it does feature a number of new parts. At its core, buried under all those batteries, is the newly unlocked Probo Dobodyne Hex, the upgrade from the Octo Probe core that you've seen before. As you can see, the hex allows me to lock onto the prograde or retrograde vectors just like a level 1 pilot. Uh, Jeb and Valve perhaps should be worried. It is being pushed by the F487S Spark liquid fuel engine, which, when compared to the lower tiered Ant engine, provides significantly more thrust and a slight improvement in efficiency at the expense of an extra 80 kilograms of mass. Also aboard is the round 8 toroidal fuel tank, as well as the 1 kilogram octonal strut, a lightweight structural part which is what the solar panels at the top are attached to. As this will eventually be a communication satellite, I put on a relay antenna, the HG-5 high gain antenna, which you have seen a number of times before. I was considering using the heavier and more powerful RA-2 relay. But once I got into the numbers with my tier 2 deep space network, I realized it wasn't necessary. This is the antenna by the way that I was thinking of taking to Duna, but it was too sketchy for that. I need a better antenna. It's even a rather poor choice for the other inner planets. I guess it's meant as a poor man's choice for going to Eve or Moho. Okay, that's LKO with an inclination of 5.9 degrees, which should make our injection out to Minmus all the easier. And indeed it was. 920 meters per second prograde gets us our encounter pretty close to Minmus's equatorial plane. You can see the target orbit in red here. I am coming a bit south of the mark, but that is only because the target orbit is somewhat inclined. A small correction mid-course should take care of that easy enough. Yeah, when going to Minmus, do yourself a favor. Launch at either the ascending or descending node and adjust your heading so that your low orbit about Kerbin is at the right inclination. It really makes it easier. This is my first time in this campaign trying to match a specific orbit around another body. I want to have my periapsis just touching the target orbit. Often here I would be making a further radial or normal adjustment. But honestly, this is all looking pretty good. 
I think I'll just set up the capture. Let's take a look at the orbital parameters while I do this. Ooh, I got myself a longitude of the ascending node measure to match. That just gets the ascending and descending nodes in the right place. But you really don't have to worry much about it. Just eyeballing the target orbit will get you close enough. I think this should be close enough here. This is looking pretty good. A little more tweaking with the inclination. As there is no argument to the periapsis parameter, I actually don't have to get the periapsis and apoapsis in the same locations as they are in the target orbit. I just need to get them to the right altitudes. Another mission coming up in this video has the argument of periapsis parameter, so I'll talk about it then. Okay, with that set up, it's science. It has been suggested by a viewer that I use these science buttons provided by X-Science rather than always right-clicking on the parts. Honestly, since the introduction of pinnable menus, I really don't mind the right-clicking, but we'll give this a go. Okay, that's 12.6 temperature science to transmit. There it goes. Obviously, everything has to be transmitted. I have no intention of... Uh, Bringing this back, let's just check here. Yep, nothing left to transmit. Okay, pressure data, let's do that. Oh, wait a minute, that's uh, temperature again. Get rid of that. Okay, try again. Pressure. Ah, oh, that's again! Okay, wait. Wait for it. There. Okay, pressure. <laughs> okay, 18.9 science. Okay, transmit that away. You may be noticing I am getting the full 40% science transmission bonus. Okay, 9.5 science of goo. Goo science will transmit this away. Yeah, 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 transmit. It's comforting to know the math works. I told you I didn't need the bigger antenna. Alrighty, materials bay. Here it comes. 27.6 science will transmit that. And then we are done with. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, aborting transmission. Oh, geez, I'm out of electricity. Oh, shoot. I hope I haven't just botched this up. Okay. Um, Reset materials bay? Oh, shoot. I see review data. Oh, it was there. There was a review data there. I bet you I still had it. All I had to do was hang on to it. Okay. Well, what I decided to do is to go get my capture anyway, and then we'll try for the materials bay afterwards. The batteries will be fully charged by then. The materials bay is not biome specific and we won't be getting into near space so it doesn't matter when I do it. I'm really watching the contract requirements here more than the nav ball. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we can get rid of the maneuver now. We just gotta wait for our 10 seconds to go by. There we go, that's the contract complete. Get rid of that and oh, those are all my other contracts. Let's just get rid of this all together. Alright, materials bay. Observe materials bay. Ha ha, there it is. 27.6 science will transmit that. Off it goes. Alright, let's get this into an orbit more appropriate for a relay. Yeah, we'll add the maneuver node at the descending node. And we'll get our inclination down to zero. Now you may recall that I had a bit of an issue with my moon relay because I put it at too high an altitude and communitrons near the surface of the moon weren't able to communicate well with it. I won't make the same mistake again. No, each of my mistakes needs to be a fresh new mistake. So this time I'm going to be putting this at an altitude of 512.68 kilometers. That will give it a period of three days, which will be a nice number to phase with, something I'll be doing around the moon as soon as I'm done here. It'll also be well within solid communication range of a Communitron 16 near or on the surface of Minmus. We'll just cut here to our final insertion. I'm really watching the orbital period more than anything else. Oh, just another minute. Just a touch. Ah! Oh, I overshot it. Okay, okay, let's put this back around to prograde. And we'll tweak the thrust on this engine down as low as I can get it. Go there, there we go, that's really low. Okay, let's try going the other way a little bit. Again, I want three hours, three days on that orbital. Oh, now I'm too far. Oh, overshot the other way. <laughs> wow, this is really twitchy out here, even at this low thrust. 
Well, after a bit more flipping back and forth, I, fi I did eventually get this down to within four seconds of three days. I figured that was close enough. So that's it. We'll leave this here and look for future opportunities to send a couple more satellites this way to complete the network. In the meantime, back at Mission Control, I now have almost 850,000 Kerr bucks and 145 science to spend. I just have enough to upgrade the tracking station, but let's check messages first. Oh, I see some milestones. Let's see here. First flyby of Minmus, first science from Minmus, and our first orbit of Minmus. And we'll just check our contract. You have successfully deployed our satellite in orbit of Minmus. 160,000 funds, 12 science, 12 rep. That's a pretty nice payout for that contract. Anyway, I decided not to upgrade any buildings just yet, but in the R&D center, I unlocked advanced flight control, which gives me the 1.25 meter reaction wheels, a landing capsule, and RCS. And with that done, it was on to the next two missions. This time we're on our way to a high polar orbit about Kerbin, after which we'll be shuffling over to the moon. On this whole thing we have but one new part, the just unlocked advanced inline stabilizer. Finally, some 1.25 meter reaction wheels. Placed near the center mass of the vehicle, the reaction wheels in KSP are crazy powerful and can pretty much handle attitude control all on their own, so no more big tail fins or gimbaled main engines. In fact, I'm calling this lifter done, and I've placed it into a sub-assembly, naming it, naming it my 1.25 meter light. The main rocket alone can bring about 600 kilograms into LKO, and I can use SRBs to either up the payload, or go to more expensive orbits like this polar orbit. You can see my heading is a bit west of north, as I need to pull the prograde vector over from the eastward direction. Okay, that is main engine cut off with an inclination of just over 90 degrees. Perfect. Ah, the antenna rays, that's not good. Okay, it seems all right, but that fairing piece is stuck there. Let's spin this up, see what happens. There it goes. All right, everything seems okay. Yeah, what happened here upon investigation, I found out that I had attached the antenna and the lights to the staging action group rather than attaching, well at least the antenna I wanted to attach to the gear action group. So I'll have to make sure to go back in there and fix that up. After booster separation it was routine burn to get the apoapsis up to attitude and once there to perform our orbital insertion to complete the contract. Though no new parts on this probe, if you look closely here, you will notice that I have translated the engine from the center. This is to offset the mass of the antenna. The engine isn't exactly on the center of mass because the center of mass will move as the fuel drains. So I just placed it so that the center of thrust splits the difference as the center of mass moves. Though not perfect, the reaction wheels in the probe body have no trouble holding attitude, even at full thrust. Once the contract was complete, it was time to get this thing to the moon. This is not too dissimilar from the moon injection you saw me do last episode, so I won't spend much time with it. I will say I got a very quick encounter without having to hop ahead any orbits, though a 198 meter per second correction was necessary to get the encounter I wanted. It was the usual capture followed by a high altitude plane change, but then comes the part of this that is a little different from what you've seen so far in this series. I want to match the orbit of the relay that is already there, but this is the second of what will be three satellites that I want equally spaced in this orbit. To accomplish this, I'm going to con configure Kerbal Engineer to give me two new pieces of information, intercept angle and phase angle. Now that I have the editing window open here, I can show you just how configurable this is. So what I want is going to be under the rendezvous set of information. Yeah, let's see what we got here. What am I... Okay, intercept angle. Yeah, I'd like to have that. That really is more for later. What I'm looking for is... Oh, it's up at the top here. <laughs> Phase angle. That is what I need. All right, so we can close the editor here. And what I'm interested in is what my phase angle is towards periapsis. So we'll do a little bit more time warping. 
And I, as I get in around periapsis, I'm seeing it's in around negative 46 degrees. Imagine lines connecting my satellite and the target satellite to the center of the moon. The phase angle measures the angle that is created. That it is negative is telling me that the target is behind me. I would like this angle to be 120 degrees or 240 degrees, either positive or negative. What would be quickest would be to have my satellite complete its orbit more quickly than the target, which would get the phase angle to increase. But that would mean lowering the added altitude of my orbit below the target only to have to raise it again. So what I decided to do is to keep my apoapsis up higher than the target and just ride around a bit. Okay, my period is about four hours, while the target orbit's period is three hours. So I'll fall back a further hour with each orbit. One hour out of three is a third of an orbit, which is about 120 degrees. Though at the time I was doing this, I wasn't figuring any of this out and decided just to go around and see how it goes. After an orbit, I'm now negative 286 degrees for my phase angle. I lost about 140 degrees. I continued doing this from the hip and just reduced my period some more, now down to 18 minutes over the target 3 hours. 18 minutes is 10% of 3 hours and 10% of 360 is 36 degrees, which is pretty much exactly how much fa the phase angle changed by, now getting an angle of negative 250 degrees, which is only 10 degrees off from the 240 degrees I wanted. I figured this was close enough and brought my period down to the target three hours, at least one more satellite to go. This time I got a night launch because, once again, the target orbit is inclined and it just happened that the first equatorial node was on the night side. Figured we haven't had a night launch yet, so why not? Besides, there really isn't much new to see here. I told you I was going to start reusing lifters. This is the same lifter as the previous mission, minus the SRBs, as this time the inclination of my target is only 3.2 degrees, which is pretty much equatorial for planning purposes. I did fix that staging issue with the fairing, so that went a lot cleaner. But as for the probe itself, well, if these stats look familiar, it's for a good reason, because I didn't change a damn thing. Not even the amount of fuel in the tanks, resulting in a probe that is significantly overbuilt for what it needs to do. That need starts by hitting a specific Kerbin orbit. Now this time I do have the argument of periapsis parameter to hit, which means my apoapsis and periapsis need to be in the right spot. This is done by simply adding a bit of radial to the burn, which shuffles them around in their orbit. Note that. Though I am adding about 46 meters per second of radial, the total burn only increases a few meters per second. That's the Pythagorean theorem at work for me there. It was then on to the insertion and the completion of the contract, after which point, well, it's back to the moon. Compared to the other insertions you've seen me do, this one's pretty straightforward and, wait a second. I haven't gotten my capture yet, but this position ain't bad. My phase angle is about 129 degrees. I mean, that's as far off as the satellite that I spent all that time fiddling with. Oh, the heck with it, let's just do this right now. This doesn't quite look like the equilateral triangle I normally like. A little more isosceles, I think. But it's certainly going to be good enough. Let's cut to the completion of this insertion. Take a better look at this. That's a lot of green lines, including one to my little probe on the surface of the moon that only has a communitron for communicating with. Maybe I'll come back sometime in the future and tweak this. And then again, maybe not. No, I think this is going to be fine. Back at the Space Center, I now have over a million curb bucks. I was considering upgrading the tracking station but I think I'll save up for the VAB to get full action groups and unlimited park count. In the meantime, I really need more science. I gotta put my Kerbals back to work, and with RCS now unlocked, not to mention the single crewed landing can, yeah, I think it's time to up the quality of my spacecrafts. But you know that's going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.